Hey everybody, so we are going to go on a nature walk today and take a little drive. Then we're going to go over to the Mississippi River and explore around and we're going to listen to some inspirational talk. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you at the end. Can you hear that? I think those are geese. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think those are geese. I wonder, I wonder what you would do if you had the power to dream at night any dream you wanted to dream. And you would, of course, be able to alter your time sense and slip, say, 75 years of subjective time into eight hours of sleep. You would, I suppose, start out by fulfilling all your wishes. You could design for yourself what would be the most ecstatic life. Love affairs, banquets, dancing girls, wonderful journeys, uh, gardens, music beyond belief. And then after a couple of months of this sort of thing at 75 years a night, you'll be getting a little uh, taste for something different. And uh, you would move over to an adventurous dimension where there were certain dangers involved and the thrill of dealing with dangers. And you could rescue princesses from dragons and go on dangerous journeys. Make wonderful explosions and blow them up. Eventually get into contest with enemies. And after you've done that for some time, you'd think up a new wrinkle to forget that you were dreaming. So that you would think it was all for real. And to be anxious about it and then uh, because it'd be so great when you woke up and then you'd say well like children who dare each other on things how far out could you get what could you take what dimension of being lost of abandonment of your power what dimension of that could you stand you could ask yourself this because you know you'd eventually wake up. And then you would get more and more adventurous and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. You would dream the dream of living the life that you are actually living today. That would be within the infinite multiplicity of choices you would have of playing that you weren't God. Because the whole nature of the Godhead, according to this idea, is to play that he's not. So in this idea then, everybody is fundamentally the ultimate reality. Not God in a politically kingly sense, but God in the sense of being the self, the deep down basic whatever there is. And you're all that. Only you're pretending you're not. If you were the Supreme Self, what would you do? I mean, would you just sit there and be blissfully one and uh, everything, forever and ever and ever? No, well, obviously not. You would uh, play games. You would, in other words, for the very nature of the fact that I said, no energy system is an energy system unless it lets go of itself. So you would let go of yourself. And you would get lost. And you get involved in all sorts of adventures. And you would forget who you were. Just as when you play a game, playing poker. And although you're only playing for dimes or for chips, you get absorbed in the game. 
and he, nothing really important to win, nothing really important to lose, and yet it becomes fantastically interesting who wins and who loses. And so in the same way it is said that the Supreme Self gets absorbed through ever so many different channels, which we call all the different beings, in the plot, just like an artist or a writer gets completely absorbed in the artistic creation that he's doing, or an actor gets absorbed in the part in the drama. At first we know it's a drama. We go to a play and we say it's only a play. And the proscenium arch tells us that what happens behind that arch is not for real, just a show. But the great actor is going to make you forget it's just a show. He's going to have you sitting on the edge of your chair. He's going to have you crying. He's going to have you trembling because he almost persuades you that it's real. And what would happen if the very best actor was confronted by the very best audience? Why, they'd be taken in completely. And the one would confirm the other. So this is the idea of the universe as drama. That the fundamental self, the Saguna, Brahman, plays this game, gets involved in being all of us, and does it so damn well, the, the, it's so superbly acted that the thing appears to be real. And we're not only sitting on the edge of our chair, but we start to get up and throw things. We join in the drama, and it all becomes uh, whatever it is that's going on here, you see. Then, of course, at the end of the drama, because all things have to have an end that have a beginning. The curtain goes down and the actors retire to the green room. And there, the villain and the hero cease to be villain and hero. And they're just they're the actor. And then they come out in front of the curtain and they stand in a row and the audience applauds the villain along with the hero. The villain for having been a good villain hero for having been a great hero. The play is over. And everybody heaves a sigh of relief. Well, that was a great show, wasn't it? So the same idea, the green room is the Nirguna Brahma. That behind the whole show where there are no differentiations of I and thou, subject and object, good and evil, light and darkness, light and death. But within the sphere of the Saguna Brahman, all these differentiations appear because that's out in front, that's on the stage. And no good actor, when on the stage, performs his own personality. But in a great actor can assume any kind of personality male or female, and suddenly convert himself right in front of the audience into somebody who takes you in entirely. But in the green room, he's his usual self. So Hinduism has the idea that, you see, it's all the conventions of drama go right along with it. That all this world is a big act. Leela, the play of the Supreme Self. And it's therefore compared to a dream passing illusion and uh, you should not therefore take it seriously although that of course is involved we do take it seriously but you see one of the great questions that you have to ask yourself when you really get down to the nitty gritty about your own inmost core is are you serious or do you know deep within you that you're a pudding? Hey everybody, I'm back home now and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did like it because um, I've really heard that helps the channel. And again, I am sending you love and good vibes always. Thank you.